I have definitely come to a position as a journalist or someone, if I'm giving an interview of telling the absolute truth. Who's going to tell me I can't? I can't do this, that, this, that. And on the other hand, I've had I've, I've, many things in my life, a PhD. I never earned my PhD. Suddenly, after the Manhattan swim, a PhD in comparative literature seemed irrelevant. My, you know, teens and 20s, I was a world champion swimmer and held a number of world records in the ocean, particularly. First woman to swim around Manhattan Island, you know, and that sort of thing. In her 1978 memoir, Other Shores, Nyad names two of the six women who preceded her around Manhattan, and she provides details about their swims. Uh, you know, when I'm talking about uh, records or, you know, facts as they happened, if, if people need to know them, and now I'm a minor public figure, but something a public figure, um, like that, that memoir, it's some 400 some pages. I swear by every single word, every paragraph in that book, it all happened exactly the way it happened. I had given a speech in New Mexico at a school in Arizona, university. The corporates mm. talk. And mm. after the speech, I joined the group for dinner where I was seated next to an older woman. At one point, she reached for her glass and the sleeve of her blouse pulled short to reveal the numbers etched on her wrist. Saw the number. Etched in her forearm and I said, you're a survivor. Taken to Treblinka on a train. An interminable train ride to Dachau. One of the myths about the Holocaust is that all Holocaust survivors have tattoos. In fact, it was only at Auschwitz and only for a couple of years. According to Dr. Barbara Distel, former director of the Dachau Concentration Camp Memorial Site, Nyad's Holocaust story is completely fictional. When I'm on stage, though, I can vouch that every word is true. The only sort of world-class swim I had tried and failed at back in my 20s was going from Cuba to Florida. We've taken our swimmer out of water and now heading back for folks to Nova. I didn't swim very much tonight. I, I don't, I don't like to be known as a quitter, but I quit. And then it came the Olympic trials. I was walking down the pool deck at the Olympic trials, and I took a deep breath and I looked up, and I didn't qualify for the trials. And I, I certainly am very careful as to the stories I tell. And I still, Bonnie, if we're at a dinner at a dinner party and I've told a story, she'll go, well, it, it didn't happen exactly like that. And I, and, and I say, who cares? That story isn't for history and there's nobody here recording it. And, I'm, you know, and it's not a self-aggrandizing story like I achieved this. But the box jellyfish, the most potent venom on earth, usually a fatal sting 99% of the time, if you're surfing and that tentacle swept, you're dead. You're dead instantaneously. The overall mortality after box jellyfish stings may approach 15% to 20% in selected locales. I, I, had, I had stings all over. I had, you know, I swam into a swarm of a million of them. I should have died that night. No hyperbole. A big storm was coming, lightning all over the place, and we have a protocol. I go with the shark divers. They're never allowed to touch me, right. ever. And they're, they're great. They're all around me, but never touch me. Because right. you're never allowed to be held up or right. anything like that. And we're real careful about the rules. The rules of the sport are you're next to a boat, but you can never touch the boat. No, nor get out on the boat mm -hmm. or, you know, or, or be, touch any other person. So you are in the sea on your own. We did not break one rule. I never, of course, touched a boat or another person. John Barry, when we were going in on the boat, he, he signaled me to get, well, we're about a mile out, I guess, yeah. to get very close to the boat so they could guide me. It was very important that no one touched me because you're disqualified. After all that, right. somebody comes up and hugs you and says, great job, done. So I'm sure this swim will be ratified in due time, and that's fine, but just don't care about it. Despite appeals to the World Open Water Swimming Association and the International Swimming Hall of Fame, Nyad's crossing remains unratified. The inadequate logs, absence of published rules, and violations of most, if not all, of the accepted norms of marathon swimming make it unlikely that any governing body will ever certify her attempt. It just so happened Bonnie and I were watching the 60-minute special on Steve Jobs. Mm. So this, this person comes on and says, you know, Steve, he just didn't think that laws were made for him. And Bonnie went like this, so as we were watching television, she went... 
<laughs> Be your true self. Don't lie to yourself and don't lie to anybody else. Thousands of four-foot squid were feeding in a massive frenzy, literally grabbing birds out of the air. And I'm like, yeah. people, my Lord, yeah. would you leave the woman alone? She just swam for 53 hours. What did that feel like, though, having people say, um, you know. It was a fraud. It was a fraud. Yeah, yeah, yeah I know. Can yes. you imagine? 